uh, transitioning to a green economy. Member for Calgary Confederation. Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker. And yes, today I rise to speak to Budget 2023, and I will be sharing my time with the great honourable member from Simcoe North. Yay, we love that guy. You know, perhaps, uh, Mr. Speaker, more than any other budget in recent memory, Canadians were looking to this federal government to send some strong signals on responsible governance, prudent spending, fiscal responsibility, and a path through these high inflationary times. Unfortunately, however, Mr. Speaker, the reality is that we did not see any of this in the budget, and so it should come as no surprise that I, along with my Conservative colleagues, will not be supporting this budget as it stands. <laughs> of course, we do know that the, the NDP will support this Liberal government because they always have, they always will, ever since their coalition government began. And the NDP's blank check approach to dealing with the Liberals' incompetence is only making matters worse. This makes them a part of the problem. This leaves the Conservatives as the only national party to stand up for Canadians. The single largest selling point from this budget I see, Mr. Speaker, is this token $225 payment to lower, to lower income Canadians to supposedly help with the uh, rising cost of groceries. This just shows that these Liberals are clearly out of touch with the realities that Canadians are facing as they do their weekly grocery shopping. I was at the Calgary Co-op Grocery Centre in Brentwood last week. I shopped there. I've been shopping there now, Mr. Speaker, for probably 40 years, and I'm getting to know the people. I, a shopping excursion for me takes an hour, an hour and a half. It's a... Uh, it's, uh, it's an hour, an hour and a half of talking to the people in the aisles and shopping. And um, the people that I see at the shopping centre, Mr. Speaker, they, they look drained. Not only are their hard-earned money, but they're their mental resources as well. They're, and, and they are dealing with how they're going to put food on the table. You know, I went to the produce section, Mr. Speaker, and, you know, it's shocking. The cost of lettuce is up 35 per cent in just, just this past year. Fresh vegetables for the uh, vegans out there, up 15%. Flour, flour for people who want to bake bread because they can't afford to buy their bread, up 23%. Cooking oil for people who can afford to buy chicken or hamburger, up 23%. Butter, to butter the bread that you can't afford is up 19%. Pasta for you Italian lovers out there that enjoy Italian food, 19% increase. Canned veggies, again, for the vegans, 17% increase. Bread, if you can afford it, up 18%. And even potatoes, Mr. Speaker, potatoes up 16% this past year. So this $225 payment literally equates, if you do the math, to about $4.32 per week pittance of support for struggling Canadians. But not a worry, Mr. Speaker, because, you know, the Liberals and NDPs, they say everything is just fine and that inflation is coming down. Well, sure, it may be coming down for, for non-essential items like uh, televisions or high-tech gadgets, but it certainly isn't coming down for the bare essentials, the necessities that Canadians need to feed and house their families. And in no way can this government claim that food security is not an issue in Canada when 60 percent more Canadians are expected to need the food banks this, this year. The problem is even more acute in certain communities around this country and then certainly up in the north. This lack of food affordability will have long-term effects and will add to the stress of many households in this country. This stress will drive up the rates of domestic violence, it will impact educational outcomes of many of our children, and it will have a lasting impact on our most vulnerable, in particular our fixed income seniors and our veterans. But not only food affordability, Mr. Speaker, uh, there are many other things going wrong in this, in here in Canada, and the Liberals and NDP seem to be blind to it all. For example, in the last eight years, we see a country where there are marijuana pot shops at every turn, at every corner, yet parents are desperately driving around town looking and searching for children's formula and children's medication. And overdose deaths, Mr. Speaker, are at a shocking level and they are rising. 
and yet the Liberals' response is to make it easier to get access to these deadly drugs. And Canadians need mental health support more than ever, Mr. Speaker, but this Liberal government refuses to activate the 988 emergency line that our colleague, MP from Caribou, Prince George, has been advocating for years to no avail. And this government is hiring thousands more public servants. In the past two years alone, the public service has grown by 31,000 full-time employees. Yet somehow, the wait times are worse than when we, first, when we had fewer employees. They are spending more and we are getting less. The story of this Liberal and NDP government. And Canada needs immigration more than ever to fill our labour shortages, Mr. Speaker, but the immigration black backlog gets longer by the day. In July of 2021, the backlog was an astounding 1.5 million applications. The government promised to prioritize the problem and hire more people. The result? The backlog has increased even further now, Mr. Speaker, and it now stands at 2.15 million. Another example of paying more and getting less. Housing prices, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, they've doubled. We all know that, but the government thinks the problem is solved with some $500 house, housing payment. And violent crime is up. Illegal gun crime is up. Drug crime is up. And the number of police officers killed on duty is going up at an alarming level. And all this government has in response is that they, they give their thoughts and prayers to the family. If I truly felt that this government's 2023 budget really hit the mark, I would say so, Mr. Speaker. I have in the past praised parts of Liberal budgets, but this budget is such a letdown for Canadians. No plan for housing affordability. No plan for reducing crime. No plan for controlling inflation. No plan for true food security. No plan for today. No plan for tomorrow. Canadians need a government that, government that remains focused on the most important things. Instead, we have a liberal, liberal NDP government that is more concerned with photo ops and penny payment schemes instead of dealing with the root causes. Canadians need a government that supports all businesses and encourages economic growth in every sector in this country, in particular our oil and gas sector that this government has decimated. Our national debt has doubled also under this Prime Minister, Mr. Speaker. It is a massive debt burden that will haunt current and future generations of Canadians for decades to come. It will impact our ability to support our most precious social programs and put our critical services at risk. Mr. Speaker, it has been a few weeks now since this Liberal NDP government delivered their budget. I hope that they will take the feedback of Canadians seriously. Their budget could not have been more widely denounced if they had tried. They need to know their budget is not what Canadians wanted or needed. What Canadians want is a fiscally responsible government government that respects their hard-earned tax dollars. Canadians want a government focused on responsible, prudent spending that is within our spending capacity. Canadians want a government that tackles inflation instead of recklessly spending to fuel that inflation. Canadians want a government that focuses on delivering the most basic services it currently has instead of creating new wasteful and ineffective programs. Canadians want a government that doesn't saddle future generations with crippling debt. Canadians will get this government, Mr. Speaker, at the next election when they elect a new Conservative government. Thank you. Yeah.